Hello and welcome to the 32nd episode of the... What is so funny? <laughs> what is so funny? I don't know. I don't know. This is not a funny movie. No, this you're is right. a realist <laughs> podcast, the podcast about our list of movies, uh, also known as a real list. There, I explained the title for the 30th time. I'm your host, Ellis. <laughs> and I'm your host, Clark. And today we have a selection from me. This movie is not funny. I know it's not funny. <laughs> We literally just finished watching it. I know we did. I know we did. <sighs> oh, man. We're, we're going to try to do this more often. I used to leave, like, a day of rest time in between watching the movie and talking about it. But, honestly, I think my premise for doing that was flawed, and we should just do it right after the movie. So, this is Atomic Blonde, a 2017 movie based on a 2012 graphic novel called The Coldest City. Um... And it's based around, well, I won't go over the novel specifically, but the atomic blonde in question, uh, as played by Charlize Theron, right? Charlize Theron. I have no idea I've heard the name it. a million times, but I, I've never had to pronounce it myself. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's directed by David Leitch, screenplay by Kurt Johnstad, produced by Charlize Theron, uh, Beth Kono, A.J. Dix, Kelly McCormick, Eric Glitter... Or Eric Gitter. <laughs> and, Glitter would and, be a nice name, to, yeah. last name to have. And uh, Peter Sharin. I mean, isn't Gary Glitter? That's a person. That was a famous person at some point, right? Gary Glitter. Gary Glitter. I don't know. What it I don't means. know. I feel like I've had him mentioned. I've heard him mentioned in a song. Anyway. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm mishearing a lyric. Anyway, starring, starring Charisse Theron, uh, James Mc, Mc, McAvoy, McAvoy, John Goodman, Till Schwinger. Till Schwe yeah, Schwieger, uh, Eddie Morrison, Sophia Butella, I believe that is. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Roland Muller and Toby Jones. Cinematography by Jonathan Sella, which normally we don't mention the cinematographer, but the cinematography in this movie is very cool in a in a literal sense. It uses a heavy emphasis on cool colors and blues in particular. Yeah, I that loved was, her hotel room. Yeah, and just the way the whole thing is shot is like that. It uses a certain, you know, a, a tweaked <clears throat> spectrum, if you will. Um, and I remember the first time I watched this, which was actually on my flight home from Italy, I watched four movies in a row from Takeoff to Touchdown. Uh, I don't remember the exact order, but it was this movie, Baby Driver, which I'd like to do a podcast on, and the two Kingsman movies. Um, back to back to back to back. Uh, back to back to back. To it back. was it was a nice flight. I was like, oh, maybe I should get some rest on this flight, and then I watched four movies instead. <laughs> uh, I finally got to live out the thing that I'd been hearing about on the Rooster Teeth podcast for my entire adolescence, which was being on a plane for hours and watching movies on a plane. I've never watched a movie on a plane. Most people who only take domestic flights won't, because most U.S. domestic flights don't have like a screen mounted in your seat. So that you can watch. I mean, a movie. I'm, I'm pretty sure if you're flying like internationally, they're gonna have. Well, that's what I mean. This was my first and only time flying international, <laughs> and they had the ability to watch movies on the plane, which I had never gotten before. Even though, unlike you, I have flown quite a few times. Uh, and you've only, only flown, flown once. I've, I've only flown like a handful of times. Right. Anyway, so yeah, this is a movie about a spy. Um, she's yeah. sent into Berlin to find a. Uh, a list. a list of basically all all of their agents. Uh, she's an MI6 agent. She's looking for a list of all of the other MI6 agents, uh, which is printed inside of a watch. It's which is, I think it's cool. I it's think, very cool. I think it's very cool. I, I honestly think the fact that the jeweler is just, or the, the watchmaker is just doing all this stuff and not getting, you know, involved in all this is kind of suspect i don't know how realistic that enterprise would be but you know i'm not in terms of criminal underworld i'm not really involved in the spy stuff uh but it turns out that there's a double agent it turns out she's a double agent or more like a triple agent she's a cia agent posing as a uh russian agent posing as um, a, a british agent. british agent which is, I I missed a lot of this. This might have been, I don't remember in, again, I don't remember the order of the movies I watched. But I missed a lot of the subtext and even some of the very forward text uh, in this movie of what everything was about. And so I was able to relearn this 
with you while we were watching this thing. Yeah. It, pretty quickly, you hit the nail on the head that, that Percival, who is the James, agent... James uh, McAvoy. Yeah, James McAvoy, right? He was... He was... Um, the, the... Her, her contact in Berlin. Mm-hmm. And uh, ostensibly an MI6 agent. You're very quickly cued into the fact that he's not a good guy, really. Yeah. Um, and... You know, there there were a few things in the movie. What were the things that stood out to you before he shot that guy? Obviously, before he shot the uh, uh what did they call him? Spyglass. Spy- before they shot, before he shot Spyglass. What before that had cued you into like, hey, maybe Percival's a double agent? What cued me in was the fact that um, what is it? He uh, kind of told her about the girl. About the girl taking the pictures, and then I the French agent, you mean? Yeah, the French agent. Okay. And then um, the fact that I mean, I get it that there's a wiretapping just to be safe, but I feel like him putting it in her jacket was the dead giveaway. Oh because, yeah, well... because she only wore a wire. She didn't tr- like track him like track hit like leave a device in his house no. she wore a wire any chance she got and i i don't know if they they like cue you in on it but i think she put a wire on him i i don't know if that's the case or put a but bug she on was, him she was wearing the wire the whole time they were together and used a lot of that audio mm-hmm. in the very end it's a blink and you miss it scene that i missed on my first watching mm-hmm. which is when she's stitching together his audio to make it seem like he was Satchel. He was the double agent that they were after. Which, mm. don't get me wrong, he's definitely not a great agent. No, definitely uh, not. Like he's, he, he's the bottom of the barrel kind of agent. That... He's out there for himself, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why he wants, the, he wants the watch, he wants the list. He doesn't really want to help um, Lorraine, who is the main character, yeah. at all. Uh, to the point where you mentioned that he pointed out the the French agent that was tailing her, mm-hmm. but he doesn't like help her at all. No, like she asks him, you know, who's this lady that's been following me, and he's like, oh, I don't know. You're beautiful. Put the put two and two together. Yeah, so... he was gaslighting her a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, and he was he was playing mind games. He bugged her jacket. Uh, he was doing deals with the KGB. Yep. Yeah, he was he was not exactly a double agent, but he was not really playing his role. No. As a as and an MI6 I, agent. He he was also a British agent who was in Berlin. I'm so sorry. Um I just started yawning out of nowhere. Yep. Um and oh. Say. He was a British agent who was in Berlin. He's been in there for a while. Yeah, he's been in there for a while, and um, they described that he started to go feral. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the scene when they first introduce him, you see him hanging out at like what are what a he's party? like at a club, yeah, or like a it's not really a club. I think he's just like put together a makeshift club in like a warehouse or something you know it doesn't seem above board no but point is he's hanging out drinking smoking like womanizing just, he, he you know. also talks to um spyglass spyglass yep also right in the in beginning the, right in the beginning right off the bat this movie is just action 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 like there's no spare time for a like a like a like a, sm- like a smooth moment it's just right into the action. I I disagree. I feel like there are definitely some points in this movie where you're allowed to breathe. Yeah, but, yeah, but but the the action scenes there is never a long interval How between long action scenes. How was this movie? Uh so we watched it I had it DVR'd. It's a runtime of 115 minutes, which is just shy of 2 hours. It was like 2 and a half hours on my DVR well, that's because, because of the commercials. We had ads, yeah. Um <sighs> Yeah, wow. DVR is one of those things you don't hear people talking too much about anymore. They were the most important things in the world for about ten years. Uh, Another, basically. And now streaming services movie. exist. <laughs> so this movie's budget was $30 million, and they mm-hmm. made over $100 million in the box office. Yeah, I mean, it even said in this... We didn't get to read the thing, 
uh, we just jumped right into this. It even said that there is a sequel in the works, but it's probably going to be in development hell. I doubt we're ever going to see it. It's been five years. Um, mm. When did this come out? 2017. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, it came out just in time for me to watch it on a plane. It uh, came out when I graduated. <laughs> yay, congratulations. Um, and you were talking about the name a bit. You couldn't wrap your head around why she's called Atomic Blonde. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I get it. I get it. She's blonde, and I get it. It's Cold War times, and... You know, bombs and everything. You explained it, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, I get it, but like... Yeah, I mean, you would kind of hope it would be deeper than that, because it's a spy movie, and it's like three layers deep on its own. Yeah, exactly. But At, when it's a I cool first, name. When I first started watching this, um, I was getting, like, I was getting lost in it. Like, I feel like I was getting, like, lost in, like, where we were in the movie. Hmm. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's two, it's the interrogation room, and then it's a flashback, and then it's, like, it, it, I mean, the whole thing is just the, her, her, her debrief. Yeah, and it's, I don't know, I just thought it was a little all over the place for my liking. I really don't like spy movies all that much. No? No, like, 007 and stuff like that, no, I, I, I don't do spy movies. Well, at least you can get into this one for the action scenes. Yeah, I do. I do like a good spy movie for the action scenes, but like the concept of a spy movie just really doesn't grab me. You know? No, that's interesting. I see. I also was very lost on my first viewing, and I didn't realize that as much until my second one. I came out of my first viewing thinking, "Wow, this is a great movie. The fight scenes are great, and it has this added element which you don't see in a lot of spy movies or even action movies in general." With the people in the fights actually getting tired and getting worn out and the the injuries they sustain particularly oh the God. injuries Lorraine sustains that poor, carrying on that poor girl like she was fighting grown men like I mean she's a grown woman but she was fighting like grown men they weren't even putting her up against women they, yeah. they were putting her up against grown Russian men like oh yeah I mean she beat up half the KGB uh the especially thing that, the guy with the hole in his face oh my god the thing that I like about the action scenes in this on top of what i already said where every hit seems to really matter the characters in them get tired the hits really add up over time i mean you see her at the beginning of the movie going into the ice bath for the first time oh, and man. she's all bruised she's all cut up you know whatever but was she still in berlin because it looked like she was still in berlin no, no, no. Uh, what? When she took the ice bath at the beginning of the movie? Yeah. No, or she was, was that back a in. Place? She was back in London. There were okay. two different ice baths. Uh, it was the one in Berlin because I remember the blue and purple lights. Yep. And then the one in the beginning. Yeah. So there's one in the beginning, and then after the first fight ish, she takes an ice bath in in her hotel room in Berlin. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that was like a shocker. The movie starting like that and me going, "Whoa," you know. This is serious, you know, you see her all beat up. Yeah, like, what um, the hell happened to her? But she also, during these fight scenes, uses everything in her environment to her advantage. She and does. that is she really, does. really cool. That's, that's, that's being perceptive of your surroundings and making, making use of what you have around mm -hmm. you, you know? But also they're wrecking house like Godzilla and King Kong. Like, oh smashing God. all the furniture. Can we, can we just talk about the ending for a second where Percival just burns everything in oh, the yeah. building? Oh, yeah. And I'm just like, I mean, no evidence left behind, but still, like, god damn. Well, yeah, he's trying to go to ground, basically. He wants to take the watch, sell the thing, make a gazillion dollars, and retire to Tahiti or whatever. Yeah. You know, that's what I get out of that. It's never explicitly stated what he wants to do, but But he... I mean, his intentions are, are shown very, very well. Yeah, he has his little speech before Lorraine gets to him. I feel like that was a little bit of a, not a fourth wall break, but like... Yeah, it is. I mean, he's talking to... The he audience. isn't talking to anybody. He's talking to the audience, that's right. Um, you know, you work so hard for the thing you think is right and find out that it's wrong or, you know, that sort of thing. He clearly is disillusioned with the spy, the spy shtick mm -hmm. and he just wants to go to ground and he wants to take this list and he wants to sell it and, you know, whatever. And here's the thing. To your point about you were a little bit lost, I think this movie is best with an additional viewing 
Um, and there are a lot so of So you're movies saying that, if we watch it again, I'll get it. I won't be yeah. lost the second time? Yeah, I, I feel like you okay, know Okay, so let's go now. to Italy and see if this is on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> I get the feeling it won't be. It probably have some newer stuff in there. We'll be able to watch Nope. Uh, <laughs> um, bonus episode coming soon. Just kidding. It might be the next episode, though. Uh, that's up State. to you. Providence Date. Yeah, Providence Date. Um, because, and I say that not just for your benefit, but also because I feel like I missed so much the first time around. Uh, and that was as someone who actually, you know, more or less likes these kinds of movies. I had heard a good review, mm -hmm. and then I saw this available on the plane and went, ooh, yeah, let me watch that, because I had heard good things about it. I also want to talk about uh, the, the, pro the, 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 the protest scene. Oh, yeah. Wait, Wait. Can, I, can, I, can I wrap up my thought real yes, quick? Yes, of course. There are a lot of movies where you could say, oh, you get you get more out of it with every viewing. You get more out of it with additional viewings. You know, you're always noticing more stuff, stuff in the background, whatever. Uh -huh. Like, Wes Anderson movies are like that sometimes. Uh, movies like Airplane are like that because there's always more jokes that you're not going to catch the first time around. This is... I, I feel like a second viewing is a very important, not because you're going to get more out of it, but because you need it to get all of it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that okay. happens in this movie. So, so I guess you're saying I, about the... Pro oh, sorry, go I ahead. I guess we're going to have to watch this movie again. Uh, I mean, maybe, but that's just the the idea that I have after watching it and with what you just said about it and my feelings about it. Mm -hmm. It's it's tough to get a grasp of everything that's going on. I think, you know, you probably can on a first viewing, but it's a lot easier to do it through, too. Anyway, the fact that this is not even a two-hour movie makes that a little bit easier. Uh, it's not like you're trying to rewatch uh, Avengers Endgame twice. Oh, God. Or, you know. I've seen that movie so many times. Uh, anyway, so the protest scene, and this is when they're trying to get... Uh, they're trying to get the spyglass spy glass out. out. Yes. And uh, this is the scene where uh, they have all the KGB uh, in the streets hiding... Looking like in for, windows. Lo, yeah, in windows, looking for him, looking for uh, Lorraine, looking for Percival. Um, and Percival is dressed up as a guard. Yeah. He's, he's, got, the, he's got the dumbest costume on. I don't, I don't he's know got why the you same would... cast on, like, from the beginning of the mm -hmm. movie. I honestly don't know why he would go out in that dressed up as a Russian anything. Because... It's a protest mm -hmm. against what he's wearing, basically. You know, it's like uh, it's like showing up to a BLM rally dressed as dressed as the KKK. Uh, you're gonna get the crap beat out of you, and I don't know why he didn't get the crap beat out of him. <laughs> but then, uh, but then, uh, I feel like uh, they knew that the KGB was there, and then they had the umbrellas. All the everybody he. Uh, What's his name? Uh, the the contact for Lorraine. Yeah, I don't remember uh, his name. Well, I know his actual name. His name is Bill Skarsgård. He played it, Pennywise, and it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So that's why he didn't get beat up because all of the people in that crowd are in on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he <laughs> blows. He 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 blows the a whistle with his hands and. Uh, Freaking! They all open these black umbrellas to mm -hmm. to be hidden from the from the snipers. Just up above. like on the WWF. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, and I liked that scene. I felt like that scene was great. You know, it is really cool, and it's a really cool like, oh no, they're in trouble. The snipers are zeroing in on them, and then just poof, all the umbrellas go up, and you go, wow, what? Like, this yeah. was really well and thought then, out. And then freaking Percival just shoots him, being the fucking douchebag that he is. Yep. And then Lorraine takes Spyglass into this building, and then this, this epic, like, six-on-one scene goes off, and he gets... He tries to help her to the best of his ability. He does help her. He does help her to the best of his ability after he's shot and wounded. Yeah. It's, I, it's that's, intense. I, I just love that scene. I don't know. It, it was a good scene. It is a great scene, and I think it's possibly the best fight scene in the movie. Maybe only topped by the one in what's his name's apartment, uh, where she like hits a, hits the guy with the fridge and then goes out the window on the rope. Uh, oh, oh, when he when they're in Spyglass's apartment. Yeah, yeah. That that is probably my favorite. But I, I... remember the the stair fight scene the one we're talking about as like the most intense one for me 
it felt like the stakes were highest during the course of those scenes. Mm -hmm. I also like the, the, the scene where she's in the apartment where she takes the hose and yep. uses the guy as a, a weight. Yeah. You also get a Wilhelm scream in that scene. Yes. Yes, uh, you do. Uh, which I, I forgot they had snuck into there. Also, so much censorship in this versus when it was on the plane. Like, the plane I mean, is like, yeah, there's is on, titties. There's, this is on uh, TV. There's they have to. They have to freaking. I was just like, oh, man. I, don't, I didn't even remember. I'm not sure if I watched it. When I DVR'd it, I went, ooh, Atomic Blonde is coming on. Let me record that to watch in the future because I liked it. Um, but that uh, through that fight scene with Spyglass, who by this point is, you know, everyone, to death. everyone seems to know that he has memorized the entirety of the contents of the watch. Um, but he said that wasn't entirely true. No, he said that it was. But he was talking to Lorraine about it. Remember before they left into the street? She was like, oh, I heard that you memorized the list. And he was like, not everything you hear is true. Really? I thought he, I thought he gave like a very affirmative answer. But um, he said, well, she, he, she asked, she was like, do you know who I am? He was like, yes, because he's yeah. read the list, obviously. So he knows who she is. Yeah, no, I, I, I think... You are, as the audience, supposed to believe that he does, he has in fact memorized the list. And everyone in the movie believes he's memorized the list, which is the most important part. Um, and he is a huge liability because he knows all that, mm -hmm. which is why he gets so, shot. <laughs> so it, which is why Percival so, tries to kill him. So does that mean he knows who Satchel is? Yeah. So he knew that she was... I mean, presumably... Oh, no, sorry. So that might not be on the. Well, that's what I saw on the when they were showing li the list. It said Satchel. Okay, then yeah, then yeah. Um. So. He would know that, and yeah, he's a huge, he's a huge, huge liability. And I was going through that scene and going, wait, doesn't he die? And then they got in the car, and I was like, hmm, I must have misremembered. And then they get hit by a car and thrown yeah, in the river. Yeah, then he and... just he drowns. He was already bleeding out as it was. And he seemed to be doing. Oh, he was looking a little pale, but I, it looked like he was going to survive. Um, yeah, but I think the 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 flow of him getting the the rush of them getting hit by the car and then the car falling in the water, and I feel like the water just infiltrated him way faster than it normally probably would. Because he was already shot. Well, I, I think he wasn't weak enough to escape because he had been shot. Well, he was also trapped in the car as well. Well, yeah. But I'm saying, you know, he might have been able to move his legs a little more if he was not weakened by Getting bleeding shot. out, uh, practically. The point is, he gets stuck in the car and drowns. Yeah. Uh, and Lorraine gets out barely. And Lorraine's contact manages to sneak her out of out of Berlin. Um, in a or what? out of East Berlin. In a what? In a Volvo 740 GLT. Which is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Plus one for that. I'm giving an extra star because of that. This is getting... <laughs> this is going to be on a, on a graded list of one to six stars now. One to six <laughs> stars. Um, but, yeah, it's Stasi off and I'm use my glass. Yeah. So... I'm trying to find more in here, but honestly, this is a relatively short article compared to the last ones that we've, uh, that we've watched or that. Yeah. We also had two in a row where a guy gets hit by a car side on where like the main character gets hit by a car, gets T-boned in a car accident. Oh yeah. Cause in whiplash. Yep. Oh, that's not two in a row. That's right. What are we watching between this? Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. That's right. Surprised there wasn't a car accident in that. I feel like they could have managed I mean, that. there kind of was. I mean, Butch hit Marcellus Wallace with the car. Yeah, that's true. Um, anyway. Um, I don't Did really... you want to talk about the, the French agent at all? Oh, and yeah. And he just and... gets brutally murdered oh, by my... Percival. I hated that. Yeah. I hated that scene. And you're supposed to believe that's fairly close together. I... I'm not trying to poke holes in this film, although I already did one with the watchmaker shop. Mm -hmm. But hole number two would be if it takes a long time to suffocate someone to death, and even Especially if you're from even that, if you're corroding someone, uh, you know you might collapse their trachea a little bit. Yes, but I think I think 
if the timeline in the movie is to be believed. Because he was it's a, there it's a very linear, It's a very linear film, aside from the parts in the interrogation room, or in the debriefing room. Uh, he had just been there, and she probably could have saved the French agent with, with CPR. Um, but, you know, it's, that's just one of those things. Yeah, but you got to also think this isn't that kind of movie where no, everybody lives all. happily ever after. <laughs> no, this is not an everybody lives sort of movie. This is, this is almost everybody dies sort of movie. I wasn't expecting the CIA, like the her being the the CIA working for the CIA. No, that's a nice twist at the end because you're almost led to believe that she is a Russian agent, uh, you know, because she is Satchel. It's revealed at the end, uh, despite framing Percival as Satchel, she is Satchel, and she goes to. I mean, Percival was some kind of double agent. Per- Percival was was barely an agent. Percival was in it for himself. Uh, if you ask me. So, yeah. Well. Well, do you want to, uh, talk about star ratings? Because we can talk, we can, you know, we always um, roll that into a little bit more discussion about this movie. I'm gonna give it a four and a half. Really? I mean, actually, no, I'll just give it a four. Because, I mean, it is a spy movie, but at the same time, you know, it was a good and very well put together movie. You know, uh, if 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 we were given the option to watch this again, I would. Like, I'm not going to say, no, I don't want to watch that movie because it's a spy movie. I mean, this would probably be fun to watch with, like, Gianna and Sunset, I feel like. Yeah. I, may, I feel know, like Gianna and Sunset would appreciate this. Yeah. They they would be entertained. Maybe they would be a little bit lost. But that's that's this movie on a first viewing. Um, it's not as bad as, like, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, which I never understood any of. Uh, but... I'm, I am going to give this an easy four and a half. I don't think it's a perfect movie. I don't think it deserves five stars. But it's a very good movie. And I like it a lot. Um, and like I said, it has some elements that don't... I don't watch a ton of action movies. But in your typical spy action thriller, you don't have... You don't have... Do we As never talked detail. about how Spyglass was the guy was one of the friends from uh, At World's End? Oh yeah, yeah, he was in At World's End, uh, or The World's End, which yeah, he was. Uh, he's he's been in quite a few things. Um, oh wow! You know he's a pretty well known <sighs> actor. Um, but yeah, let's see what's what's in here that like he was in Mission Impossible Three, which is kind of funny. Uh, Miami Sherlock Vice. Holmes. Yep, he was in the original, the original, the the Sherlock Holmes that we have not watched. Um, and oh, he, he was in, he was he in, yeah, he was in there as inspect. Yeah, I remember him. He shows up for a second. He shows up in the scene where they're taking away all of Moriarty's stuff. He's like checking. He's like checking off the book. I think. Oh, um, oh, in like the end sequence. Yeah, in the ending sequence. Oh, there he is, Peter um, Page. Yep. In the world's end. Uh, it's surprising he showed up in just The World's End and not, like, the other two, because the cast overlap between those movies is ridiculous. He was in Deadpool 2? Yeah, he was the headmaster in Deadpool 2, apparently. Oh. Um. Hmm. And, let's see, is there anything else that I know him from? I mean, we're getting into newer movies that I have not seen, so. Yeah. He was in Hobbs and Shaw, apparently. I haven't seen that, but I haven't seen that, it either. That's like a that's like a spinoff. Yeah, it's like a Fast and Furious. Yeah, that's uh, right. Kind of movie. I remember they did a lot of advertising for Hobbs and Shaw on Rooster Teeth things, if I remember right. I mean, is Fast and Furious franchise owned by Warner Brothers? I have no idea, and I do uh, not care. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Fast and Furious franchise. Uh, let's see. Because I, I want to know now, because that would make a lot of sense. Uh, owner Universal. Okay. Okay, never mind then. So. But Fast who owns Universal? There's always a bigger fish. DreamWorks. Dream. Oh, no. Subsidiary DreamWorks. Oh. Um, the Fast Saga. It's the, too much the next those... one will be the final film that concludes the series. Oh. Press X to doubt. So maybe I can actually watch all the Fast and Furious movies and not be confused? I mean, Fast and Furious, to my understanding, 
the movies just sort of escalate. I mean, apparently of... they're not in all chronological order, and there's a chronological order you have to watch it in, apparently. Huh. Okay. Interesting. I um, mean, we weren't even supposed to be talking about Fast and Furious. We were supposed to be talking about Well, this is about probably Atomic the closest Bond. we will come to, to reviewing a Fast and Furious movie. Yes, this is uh, true, because <laughs> we will not be watching one. Um, you know, Cargo Fast. You know what racing movie we should watch? Cars. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> putting it on the list. No. We're watching Cars. I might own that. I might have um, that. I don't know said. what we're watching we need to next. Watch, we need to watch a Ford versus Ferrari. I, want to I watch have that no movie idea what we're watching so next. So hard. Uh, nope. Our, no. I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, <clears throat> I don't pick know. something. Dang it. I don't know. Uh, no pressure. Pick something. <laughs> Scroll through this list. There, what did you see? Scroll through it as fast as possible. Um, Where can we watch The Shining? Uh, let's find out. We're going a little long here. Not that I'm upset. The Shining, we can watch it on... HBO YouTube. Max. Oh, HBO Max. Okay. Okay. We might watch The Shining if we don't watch No. Nope. Oh, God. That's a nope from me. We'll see how I we'll see how I deal with The Shining, uh, and we'll see you all next week. Uh, uh, if we are getting we are edging ever closer to 100 subscribers, if you like this show, please subscribe and like and that sort of thing. If you've seen this movie or anyone like it, feel free to leave a comment about it. And uh, comment if you like spy movies. What's your favorite spy movie? Yeah. What's your favorite spy movie that isn't called James Bond something something something? Yeah. Because. There are a lot of James Bond movies. Frankly, the only... If you put Austin Powers, it will be an acceptable yeah, answer. Yeah, no, that's an acceptable answer. Absolutely. Don't get me wrong. James Bond is fantastic. I, I've, I own a couple of those movies, and I would like to watch some of them with you, but that's a, that's a, future, that's a future thing. We'll uh, see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Let's go watch a movie.